five. I made it. I don't know what my computer's doing. I didn't get my coffee yet. Abby, could you prepare our cups of coffee, please, darling? Um. Don't forget to mute it, too. Mine's already, yeah, that's already muted. All right. We're going to spend a few t a few minutes here, a little bit of time, uh, just kind of chit-chatting before we get into the big topic for tonight. But uh, we do have a big topic for tonight. <laughs> hey, Kate. <laughs> it's time. <coughs> Hello, Linda and Kate and Barb. Zen Incense Shop. Uh, let's see who else we got here. Oh, Miss Patty, the Tinkerer's Wife. Mind and Body Co. Hello, everybody. Oh, she said, uh, got to eat up some dinner, but be back in a few. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> Did Abby hear me about the coffee? Probably not. She's got her headphones on. Abby. Can we get some coffee, please? I don't know what she said. I have no idea. <laughs> Boots and Bounty, Southern Bell Teacher, welcome. Oh, Southern Bell Teacher, I talked to her in... And going green, Mom. Sean's life, North Shore Preparedness. Local welcome. butchers are booked into 2020. She's in Baton Rouge. Wow. Or in the Baton Rouge area. Okay, cool. I thought that was neat. Hey, Bill, Cajun Homesteader. Boots and Bounty Homestead, welcome. Oh, I gotta get my. So, uh, I guess you can tell I'm feeling much better. Hey, we dressed the same tonight. Yeah, I noticed that too. <clears throat> I gotta get my tabs right here. So I didn't, I didn't make a post on Facebook, but thank you everybody who sent me a happy <laughs> birthdays. I really appreciate it. That made my day so special. <laughs> His phone was going ding, ding, not ding, to, ding, ding all not day. Not to mention the, the from scratch cheesecake that Abby made me because I'm a huge fan of cheesecake. <laughs> Dale Bruce and Wendy Hardneck Farms, <laughs> welcome. Look great tonight. Question is, are you behaving? No. How's my home state doing tonight? We're doing pretty darn good. Here at our homestead, at least. Just, just pass it down. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Abby doesn't want to Going be Going green, camera. Mom. Thank you very much. My day was so special. And if you don't know, it was my, my birthday was Tuesday on the 10th. <clears throat> Got it, Ray. So, uh, how, how are you guys doing? How's everybody doing out there in YouTube land? I'm gonna get Rayleigh really set up. Okay. Just got through cleaning my daughter's deer. Whoa, that's cool. I'm not a hunter, but like last year, um, hey Dawn. Uh, last year, somebody gave us a deer. Our good friends, Wayne and Susan from Grow Where You Planted Homestead. They gave us the meat from a deer and uh, part of it. that was such a blessing. Yeah, we well, ate part, part of it, of it with yeah. them. We ate some of it with them, and then they sent us home with the rest, and uh, it was nice. Well, I think we just ate the last roast just a few nights ago. Uh, how are we doing? We're doing pretty good. Um, you may or may not know I had a hernia repair last week, last Monday, <coughs> and I'm doing a whole lot better than I was last week. Look out for jars. Oh, you found some jars. Cool. Um, half pints or quarts. Um, let's wait until she comes back. Maybe if, if I forget to mention it to her, maybe you can put it in the chat again. Thank you so much for that, Southern Bell teacher. Trip H, what's happening? Walmart has pints, wide mouth today. I got four dozen. Cool. <laughs> okay, here she is. I'll, I'll ask her. Wait, wait. Uh, Southern Bell teacher says that she found half pints and quarts. 
the on the golden harvest. Oh. So, um, we'll check. I, I say we check again here locally to see what we can find before we try to organize all that. Yeah. Otherwise, I mean, we can always we can try to meet up anyway. Uh, I have but. quite a bit of quartz right now. Um, what I'm I'm <clears throat> low on is the pints, but um, though the pints for whatever reason are what's hard to find right the, now. The pints is what we use most. Yeah. Yeah. But um, hey, Michigan daffodil. Oh, hey, Jefferson Martial Arts. See you there. Um, John at Heirloom Permaculture. Welcome. Michigan Daffodil, no problem. If you can't stay very long, I appreciate you coming in. It's good to see you. Hey, Trip H. Um, <clears throat> Let me check Walmart. I didn't, I was at Walmart, we were at today, Walmart today didn't and didn't even look. I, we were yeah. trying to get Christmas stuff. <sighs> My kid. Hey, Thrifty. <laughs> Abby is um, hey, Karina. all about decorating. So by next week, my kitchen should look um, like it's Christmas. Yeah. We, we, spent, get it. We, we spent a good afternoon doing Christmas shopping. So Christmas decoration shopping. Yeah. 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 We, we had to get a tree and all the so ornaments. The, and the tree is going in this corner right here, right? Yeah, unless so I rearrange probably, furniture in the living room. It'll year. likely be in the edge of our next, our live streams for the next couple months. Yeah, <laughs> for the next couple months. And I don't, I don't want to hear nothing about us decorating <laughs> early for Christmas because we're not skipping Thanksgiving. We just, we don't normally decorate for Christmas. We haven't in several years. So we're just kind of, <laughs> we've got some leeway. <laughs> Well, we're not doing Christmas at home this year. Um, we're actually different <clears throat> doing Christmas. Um, we're not doing Thanksgiving here. Oh, uh, right. That's what I meant. That's what I meant. We're not doing Thanksgiving no here this pints. year. Okay. Um, <clears throat> found a case of pints. That's awesome. We're doing Thanksgiving at your mom's and we're doing Christmas here. Yes. Yeah. Thanksgiving will be at my mom's, and then um, Christmas will be here with Garden for Cheap and her daughter, Rachel, and uh, her, Rachel daughter, and Megan, her daughter, Megan, and her son-in-law, Cole, and the new baby, if he'll ever get you know out what? of there. It, it, it's 2020. We need to celebrate. <laughs> celebrate yeah. the end of it. <laughs> yes. You can't go back to work. The beard is showing such promise. I know, right? Well, I'll be glad to be, become a full-time YouTuber if you just pay me some money, John. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I, I tell you all what, you know, I, I cut up about having a beard. I really do. I'm enjoying it. It's And Amy said it's growing on her. So, <laughs> And, of course, my response was, hey, it's growing on me too. <laughs> you know, that's just me. But uh, Except in the mornings when he wakes up. And it I'm looks it. like something is living in there. I'm it's really loving like it. Like all like this. Yeah, I brush it off. <laughs> yes, he does. He bought a brush. And I trim the mustache often too because it's, I, it it tickles my lip. I don't I don't like that. So I do like almost daily. I keep it out of my mouth. Yeah. <laughs> he he. Hey, Stringfield Ridge. He's become a woman in the bathroom in the mornings. <laughs> like he he's constantly playing with his <clears throat> facial hair and. It's like doing makeup. It's crazy. So what's the plan for bringing you home permanently? Well, in about um, 18 to <laughs> 20, 20 years or so, I'll be able to retire. That's that's the plan. <laughs> oh, man. All right, so uh, I guess we ought to probably go ahead and get into the topic for tonight because it's, it's, it's 10 after. <coughs> So, our topic tonight is where to begin, whether you're homesteading or prepping, where to begin. And I guess we should talk about what's the difference between prepping and homesteading. Um, they're very, very closely related, in my opinion. I think uh, prepping is more so purchasing things that you think you might need in a disaster. Whereas homesteading is... Um, sustainable prepping growing or creating the things that you may need right. in times of disaster 
or you know putting the plan in place to be able to grow or make things that you can in case of a disaster or just you know i think prepping is more of a light uh homesteading is more of a lifestyle i believe i often say one of my favorite things to say is that homesteading is sustainable prepping yeah because you're growing and growing vegetables and and whatever <clears throat> and then you're preserving it to prep it so right right so instead of ha having um oh you're good you're okay. good instead of having a, a pantry full of uh store-bought canned items Homestead homesteaders prepping, prepping taken into a lifestyle homesteaders right. more likely have a uh hey Thelma. <laughs> have a pantry full of home canned items, which is both <coughs> equally fine. I mean, there's nothing wrong with either one. It's just right. different ways to pr basically to reach the same goal. <coughs> That's my opinion. We have both. Yeah, we do. Yeah, we have a mixture of both too. Right. Ours is, ours is very much uh, a blend of homesteading and prepping. Because you can't, I don't, I don't think you could grow or create everything that you need yourself. I, I, it's almost, I, I think that would be almost impossible. Well, like growing enough <laughs> rice for us here there would, you go. would be. Trip H, very, yeah, spot on. Prep steading. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. Um, like growing rice. We eat a lot of rice here. There is no way with the small amount of land that we have that we would grow enough rice for us oh, and process for sure. it. For and sure. you know, well, and I mean, and if, we, if we were to do that, then we would have no time to do anything else. That's that's some of the things that we're going to get into tonight. Is it, you know, it's it's basically we're posing questions, and it's an open discussion. Um, you're more than welcome to add your points of view, Beans or lentils, my answer dear. questions yeah. for us. That'd be yeah. great. Um, hey, Sean. I knew Sean was going to have, like, yeah, awesome we, input. I was looking forward to it. Of course, we live in southwest Louisiana, the de like the, the center of Cajun country. So rice is huge for us. Mm -hmm. We eat a lot of rice and gravy, jambalaya, <laughs> kubion. Everything these, has rice. Everything has rice because rice is, is a native crop here. Canning right now. Canning right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's awesome. Hey, Tori. Nice to see. Oh, Tori, I was thinking about you this week. I harvested a ton of Malabar spinach seeds, and I am currently drying them out. And as soon as they are dry, you will be getting a that. packet. <laughs> yeah, that's that's one thing we worked on. That That's one thing that I could help with. Yeah, because uh, all week. he had to do was, like, sit in a chair and help me snip leaves off the tree. Right, so Our vine, and we we collected a whole lot of those leaves, and she had what three dehydrators running? Oh, I had three. No, I had three running because um, I don't like to run the fourth one. It runs slower. Our cabin it, in the woods. It, it's Welcome. not as hot, um, but we got It'd about be... a half quart jar of uh, spinach powder so far. <clears throat> yeah, and I so. still have plenty more plants <coughs> to go. And then um, that one night, what was <clears throat> what didn't fit in the dehydrators? <clears throat> of the oh, leaves, yeah. Abby blended it to a pulp and added it in meatloaf. Which, oh, and there man. was there was like no flavor change in the meatloaf, but we knew that we were getting all those nutrients. Oh, from there the was spinach. a flavor change. Yeah, yeah, I, I noticed didn't think the, so. I noticed the difference. <laughs> there are a ton of great channels in here. You're absolutely right, and you're one of them, Sean. <laughs> <laughs> I'm enjoying Sean's live streams for sure. I'm learning quite a bit. <laughs> I don't know what this tickle is in my throat, but it's driving me nuts. Um, we should probably try to stay on topic as much as we can. I know. I'm sorry. So, <clears throat> our, our our topic tonight is where to begin, whether you're prepping or homesteading. Where do, where do you begin? And the first thing you want to do is you want to identify your needs. What do you need to um, provide for yourself? That's awesome, Michigan Avenue. Sorry. No, that's cool. Dehydrator. Southern Louisiana <laughs> Boudin. Now you're speaking my language. <laughs> um, and, you know, within that, what in, in identifying your needs, um, 
what is your family size? How many people are you preparing for? How many people do you need to feed or clothe? You know, just to, 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 to meet all of their needs. Are you prepping for your immediate family? Are you prepping for kids that might possibly come home and stay with you? You know, older kids or, or um, older parents, right, parents that yeah. you may need to, you know, move in and, and kind of group together. Um, are you going to be prepping to house possibly a neighbor or an extra, you know, having enough food for an extra serving, you know, an extra person that may just so, pop in. I want to recognize this, this comment. Sean says, Brett, start with dry, dry goods for long-term storage. Also canned meals that are ready to eat. That's a good idea. That's we noticed, um, the ready to eat meals would have been like super helpful after the storms because it was extremely hot. Like we're talking heat index of 107, 108. Practice, after, practice, practice. Yeah, Hurricane yes. Laura. And um, so we didn't want to cook anything. <clears throat> <clears throat> so the ready to eat meals would have been fantastic. Pour it in a pot, warm it up a little and go, you know. Could have ate it even cold. It wouldn't. Have, it really wouldn't have mattered. <coughs> Hi, Tracy Rogers. Oh, twenty-five. My goodness. Uh, okay, wow. so another another question under identifying your needs would be: um, Immediate. What are your needs, your wants, and your goals? Um, I mean. That's pretty self-explanatory. Um, and then what are you prepping for? I know in our area, obviously we're prepping <laughs> mostly, mainly for hurricanes. And in 2020, it reminded us that we need to do so. <laughs> because we, we were hit by two major storms and then some other little, uh, by comparison, little peon storms. But Michigan regardless. Michigan Avenue, that's exactly hey, what I've been doing. Um, Oh, you're from Prairie Bill. Is, cool. is cleaning and uh, reorganizing, and I found a ton of canned stuff that I forgot I had. This year has been a nightmare. So that was that was. Hey, Ellie. Truly a blessing in, in disguise, but now like it's all visible, <laughs> and it's all where I need it to be. So I'm here to troll. You might. <laughs> What's happening, Nathan? You must have heard me, or you must have seen me over in uh, Rachel's live stream talking about I need a troll because it's been a I long prep time. for whatever causes a food shortage. Having right. been in my preps last winter as a result of work shortage. Yep. And see, we're, we were very fortunate. When, when all the COVID restrictions and stuff came in, we didn't have to go to the store. Uh, we went, for, we, we made one, one haul <clears throat> of, you know, knowing that we were short on a few things because we've been using it. You know, we don't just stockpile it and put it away and never touch it. it we have a working pantry. And uh, so we we do get short on things every now and then, but um, we didn't have to go out a whole lot. Well, when our house- COVID hit, and then with the hurricanes, has, we had it. I mean- <clears throat> Our house has a, a, a walk-in pantry which that's why we chose this floor plan. If you don't know, we live in a double wide and we've been in, we've been in it for over five years now, but that's why we chose this floor plan because it was the only one that we found that had a walk-in pantry. Plus it's got all the, the deep cabinets around the fridge and it's got plenty of cabinets in the kitchen. So there's lots and lots of space for us to be able to put away um, all the different, the foods that we, we don't hoard, we just, we stock. Right, we buy a couple extra here and there as we can oh yes yeah. see vitamin supplements those sorts of things we do have extra extra storage in the bathroom too yep lots of cabinets in the bathrooms yeah and we have extra stuff in there too. as far as medical supplies we probably don't have near enough probably not as far as first aid stuff <clears throat> which is terrible because we're both qualified to to do first aid <laughs> we just don't don't have enough equipment. i had enough supplies but danny keeps hurting himself and he comes over here for nursing care do you get snacky when bored? Uh, let's see, your preps, 
Yeah, see that? Yeah, that's that's a big deal. And see, I didn't. I don't know. Um, and I say I didn't because you were at the firehouse for most of it after <clears> the storms. <throat> we stayed pretty busy here just trying to keep up with laundry and um, dishes and, you know, um, you know, just little things because laundry takes a whole lot longer when you're doing it by hand. Put up shelves between the open studs in my basement pantry. That's, that's a good idea. Yeah, that's pretty smart. <laughs> Rachel, and then I fell off your porch. <laughs> <laughs> well, hopefully. What medical items do you need? I'm a nurse. Uh, just basic first aid. Yeah. Um, galls. Um, hey, Gary. Tape. Yeah, we're talking prepping tonight. Um, you know, uh, things like that. Um, I need to. I need to put up some more saline, which I have. I've put off because of the the shortage <clears throat> of jars. I've been holding on to my jars for like food items instead of. Um, doing all the little extras in them. So I'm gonna have to get to get to do that. <clears throat> Y'all are adding a lot of good content here in the chat. I'm impressed. I, I'm so glad you're adding to the conversation. Okay, I'll definitely do that, Tori. <clears throat> um, I'm gonna write myself a note. What are you doing? Yeah, so um, I'm writing myself a note. I said that out loud. Okay, but I need the. Oh, <laughs> sorry. Um, what are you prepping for? We talked about that. What are your assets? Um, time, space, abilities, and finances. What are what do you have available? And and you you have to work with those assets. And in addition to that. You may have limitations on those things, and you may have disabilities. You've got to take that into consideration, too. Like, I'm, I'm getting older. Like, right now, especially, like, this past week, I have been a disability. <laughs> Stock up on uh, garden <coughs> solar lights, so when the power goes out, you have light in your home for a few hours. That's really a mm -hmm. good idea, and we did, that, we did some of that um, after the <coughs> storm because um, the generator was great. It's even better now that we have it hardwired into the house so that we can turn on lights, but we were running it off of only extension cords after this, the first storm and it was tough. You have two extension cords and one has to go to the um, air conditioner and one has to go to the freezer. So you're kind of swapping out to charge your phone or to run a yeah, light see, bulb that, or that's a good point sean at north shore preparedness says mutual assistance group that is important because you you must must be part of a group must even if it's just like this bouncing ideas and stuff off of each other that gives you accountability but <clears throat> to be a complete loner you're not likely to do well You're just gonna have to make do with this because I'm I'm taking notes. Okay, can you turn it a little bit toward me? <laughs> Smart Alec. I can't help it. Um, oh yeah, I love the YouTube family too. The, the community is just and it, it's outstanding. Solar as well for backup power. Yes, um, we actually have a solar charger that came in. Uh, we actually bought it the week before the same <laughs> storm came in. Southernville Teacher, if you want to, you can find us on Facebook, um, Facebook, YouTube, uh, Instagram. We don't use Instagram a whole heck of a lot. I just joined Parlor. I'm not really liking it. I don't know uh, because it's a lot like Twitter and I don't do Twitter. Uh, I may try out the MeWe. I'm not sure yet. Uh, <clears throat> but you can find us. Uh, Facebook is where we mostly are. Yeah. Bartering. Yeah. We were going to get to that. We can talk about that right now. Bartering <laughs> is super important. We have the, the guy who, uh, who prints our t-shirts for us and does all of our, um, artwork on, on everything, uh, is my cousin Joe. 
and Joe and I barter all sorts of things. Uh, I brought him eggs, honey, the other elderberry day. syrup, yeah. barbecue him a whole sauce. Load of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Bartering Matches is super and important. Waterproof containers. Yeah. When you barter, the, the trick to bartering is making <laughs> sure that it's a fair a fair trade for both parties. Because if it's not, that may be the end of your bartering. We have actually bartered canned goods for mechanic work on your truck. Yeah. Yeah. Matches in a waterproof container stick a stick matches and coat the heads with wax. Yeah, yep. I've heard that too. What TP from Amazon? <laughs> You're right. You probably there 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 may come a time again soon yeah. where uh, TP is in high demand and low stock. <clears throat> yeah, see people like Patty that do plants and stuff can barter for meat and and you know eggs and all those other things and that's a good way to stick it to the man too because when you barter there's no money that changes hands and there's no way to tax it right all right so put away extra clothing and blankets yeah and that i've been downgrading a lot of things in the house lately and i'm I'm, I guess I'm spring cleaning. I, I don't know. It's also for a branch. To but, be um, yeah. That's one thing I cannot seem to part with <clears throat> is any extra blankets. I am very cold natured. <sighs> and so, like, having extra blankets, if it's cold in here, you know, um, we can definitely cover up. Yeah, I was... Yeah. I saw that coming. Yeah, you're in California, aren't you, Tori? Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> I appreciate your super chat. And we're praying for you out there in yeah, California. Yeah, you are definitely on our prayer list. That but, yeah, There's a lot there's... going on. There's a lot of talk about another lockdown. There's a there's talk about more shortages. There There's talks about all kinds of things. I'm glad you're bringing a personal experience because... Never trade your ammo or salt. We know that we cannot trust anything that we see in any media right now. Okay, Sean, I have to ask you, why the salt? I think I know the answer, but I, I need... I've heard you say hey, that on more than one occasion. Tarps, fist clean, and duct tape. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, John, I need to get with you about... Um, like, I know you have a spreadsheet for... Salt preserves foods, right. Okay, I thought that's what it was. Your body needs salt to live, true. I need to get with John about um, a spreadsheet because he is yep. like the I spreadsheet have, man. I have several... Uh, Would you I'm, push? Let me get my sentence out. I got told. <laughs> uh, I need to know how much I should be prepping for a family of four for a year. And I know John can send me that info. <laughs> so I'm determined I'm gonna get that info. Let me put you on the spot. What? Did you ever open the last uh, spreadsheet? That yes, I did. Oh, okay. No. Did you, you never showed me. I don't even remember what it was about, what it was concerning. It was chicken feed. Oh, okay. And that's why I never showed it to you because you weren't taking <laughs> care of all that. I was. <laughs> Buy salt in 25 pound bags. No, salt doesn't go bad because it's a mineral. It's, it's a rock, basically. Where do you buy salt in 25 pound bags? You're disgusting. 750 pounds of food per person per year. Oh my God. That now, seems like now a lot. Wait, wait. You think about this, though. Wait. When you dehydrate that, or, you know, if, if a lot of that comes from dehydrated foods, then that's a whole lot less weight let less mass that you're you're stocking right. salt doesn't go bad but it does stick together <laughs> if it gets humid yeah and um it's gonna get humid curing <laughs> yeah i got you rachel <laughs> that's sam's you can get 25 pounds of salt in sam's i have never seen salt we'll look for that in a 25 pound bag here is it a bag that's what he said is it a bag 
25 pound bag. I know we've gotten canning salt in, in some big containers. <clears throat> I'll send Who can tell me what's the medicine. difference between... All dehydrated food requires tons of water added to your preps. Yeah, see, oh, that's, that's what I was thinking, that's too. That's true, yeah. Azure, Azure. yeah. Or whatever, yeah. I can get salt here in big bags. I have never seen salt in a Restaurant bag. Restaurant stores, that makes sense. Fill jugs with salt and add desiccant packs. We do that with a lot of things. In fact, this past week, we did some organizing. I buy desiccant packs in bulk. You guys have no idea. Ask Rachel and Megan and, and Kate. They've been here. Um... The heat of the summer is nothing to play with, but the humidity is here pretty much year round. It, it's rough. Uh, Sam's has large salt bags. Okay. I okay, I'm, I'm really gonna get online now. Where do you get desiccant packs in large supply? We have gotten ours um, from Amazon. Amazon. But we did some some organizing in the uh, in the cabinets uh, this past weekend. So we, we buy a... Uh, we buy the creamer? You, you said oh, all of this? No, I didn't. Yeah, we buy the creamer uh, for our <laughs> coffee in, in the bigger, the biggest container we can get. Because we drink a lot of coffee. <laughs> and um, we have we have several of those. Those are good containers. Um, I cleaned six, and we probably have about six more out there. <laughs> so, um, I mean, it's not it's not for long-term storage because it's still plastic. But um, we, we, packed it, we, we packed them with dry beans and flour. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's that's all this time. We're yeah. using basically uh, those as canisters. Um, it's no different than the ones that you buy at Walmart and the clear the clear canisters like what we have the flour and sugar right. in, and those are eight dollars a piece. Well, I paid eight dollars a piece for the creamer in Not it. Not even, huh? It's cheaper than that, I believe. Maybe it is. I don't know. <clears> oh, <throat> two packs on Amazon. Yeah, but that's an oxygen absorber. I need something that's going to absorb moisture because of the the high humidity here. Does a moist does an <clears> oxygen <throat> absorber also absorb moisture? That's what I need to know. I store pink salt because oh, that's what I use. That's weird. Oh, the Himalayan salt. Yeah. So I've never been big on the. I I don't know enough about it. I think that's why I don't use it. Which desiccant packs and mylar bags to get? I know some bags are thicker. I'm planning on yeah um um if, I would if there's a mill rating on the bags I know um the the higher the number the thicker the bag so like it like a okay. six mil bag would be thicker than a four <laughs> mil bag Sean would be a good um good person to talk to about the mylar bags I we don't buy the mylar bags we keep our foods in buckets um with lots of <laughs> desiccant packs I buy the small desiccant packs, and that way, if I have a small jar, then you want at least five mil. Um, I can only put, you know, I only need to put one one in there. But um, as far as like bigger stuff, I just throw a handful of them in there. We well, yeah, the, the humidity is low in our house, in our house, as long as the air conditioner is uh, running. Floral supply places. But we live in a very humid climate. That's a good idea, Lori. And if Laurie. the power's out, then that humidity encroaches into the house. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But then again, as long as things are sealed really oh, well. Oh, Sean I hasn't guess. used Mylar either. See, I don't know if Sean needs Mylar bags. All he's got to do is put his bucket outside in the wintertime and it's frozen solid. Yeah. I get it. You can make your own desiccant pack. I need to figure that out. We don't. Hmm. We haven't stored a lot of i don't know that we've really stored anything for long-term storage apparently my computer has decided to get every email that i've gotten today but um i'd say i'd say that we we store things for to prepare for at least probably five to ten years not longer than that steel wool and a nine volt battery starts a fire yeah yeah for sure. that i know i've Be experimented very careful when you're storing Thing, like prep items, like like steel wool and nine volt batteries, keep them separate. Do not store them in a cabinet next to each other. You do not want to burn your house down. For sure, unless you do, <laughs> then we don't need to. My know long term about that. stuff is all dry can in the in the oven into canning jars. See, I didn't want to use the canning jars that I have because. Like I said, I'm courting them for canned 
meats and oh, things like that because I gotta clean out my house freezer on fire again. with batteries. You know, in a, in a pinch, you can use a crayon as an in, like it's it burns like a candle. I <laughs> almost did that after the hurricane just yeah. because I wanted to. <laughs> yeah, we've 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 experimented with that. It lasts about thirty minutes. There's kitty litter that's made out of one hundred percent silica, and you can bag that up and make your own desk and pack. That makes sense. I've seen those, but that is um, hoarding is a bad word. That's right. Oh no, I hoard. Doritos burn too. Yes, yes, they do. Um. I heard lots of things kindling. that probably aren't good for me. <laughs> like, I'm sentimental about a lot of things. So I have to, like, pry it out of my hand. I'm like, mm, that's got to go. It's really got to go. It's, it's convincing myself. Don't store any food preps at all in a garage or attic. Only in stable temp environment. Correct. Right. I knew that. Use glass jars from the store, empty pickle <clears throat> jars, etc., for dry canning. Can you dry can in pickle jars? Oh, I bet you could. That's a game changer. The way that the way that the seal is. Pickle jars, spaghetti, y'all. I have jars everywhere around here. I keep like all of our plastic containers. I even have Danny. Danny buys these big plastic um, containers of. Peanut M&M's. And I've been having him clean out the containers when he's done with them and bring it to me. And I keep, like, <coughs> I've been using them for dehydrated stuff. Oven dry can goods. No, John. <laughs> if the seal is still good. I actually have a giant jar of pickles in the fridge. She does. I like pickles. He doesn't. He won't even kiss me after I eat a pickle. He won't go anywhere near me. It's great. I, it's fun to try, though. Every once in a while, is I catch him off guard. That is mine. Leave it alone. I need um, if you want a good long burn candle, olive oil or vegetable shortening. Yes, I knew that. Hey, Ray. Um, Dehydrated stuff in canning jars. I, I was keeping a lot of the dehydrated stuff hey, in Rick. canning jars, but I'm I'm using I'm reusing plastic jars and things like that. Um, for those of you around here would know, um, roux jars are not they're not quite the same. They have a different top than the canning jars do, and um, I reuse a lot of those. My dad saves them for me, and he'll bring them to me in a bag full. And um, they have a pretty good seal on the the. They're similar to the canning jars, but it's a solid lid instead of a lid and ring. Right. It's all one piece. Right. <clears throat> as long as there's no spots on the seal on the jar. Right. You're good to go. Okay. Oh. I'm about to be warm in this house with the oven. Don't store cornmeal. It'll go rancid from the oil. Store popcorn or, or whole kernel corn. I did not sense. know that. Yeah, and then you grind it. Yeah, that makes perfect sense. Well, yeah. That's the next thing on my list is I, I really wanna, want a uh, hand grinder. I would love one of those, uh, was it Diam Diamont? Diamont? Whatever from uh, Lehman's. Oh, man. I have such a mm. wish, wish list from Lehman's. Oh, I know. Lehman's. It's Lehman's. Lay. You said it right. <laughs> You know, I had to say that in my head a lot to make it right. <laughs> yeah, we, we have one item that we've ever purchased from Layman's because it's it's really, it's it's out of our price range for a lot of things, but um, the- Like jars, right? The breathable hand washer. It looks like a plunger. And I tell you what, after the storm, that thing <clears throat> worked great. If you don't know, it's for laundry. Hey, Arthur. Vacuum sealing candy jars. Yeah. You know, that brings up a good point. If you have vices, everybody does. You know, how long can you go without those? Yeah. You know, that's something to think about. Have some comfort foods. Um, <clears throat> like for us, <clears throat> we don't really advertise it, but Amy and I both smoke tobacco. And we 
make our own cigarettes. Hey, Southern Boy Forever. And we stay well ahead on the supplies to do so. Yep. That's why I collect antique grinders and corn shillers. Hmm. I, well, that's no, one thing I don't boy, have is that I have a meat grind, an antique meat grinder. I have several of those. What the heck is a corn shiller? I've never seen. How <laughs> do I can Bruce our live streams? <laughs> okay. Can't go without those, huh? Bucket with a gamma lid would work well for washing too. Yes. Um, oh, I never thought about washing in the bucket with a gamma lid. We use the gamma lids for food storage. Yeah. But um, we have a buck. We have an older bucket that it's it's clean. It, it was actually an icing bucket, and he drilled a hole in the top of it so that the plunger, the handle, handle comes out of the bucket. Mm -hmm. So you can actually plunge the. It feels like I'm making butter. Right. It, it's basically a butter churn. Yeah, but. <laughs> <laughs> My um, yeah, it works. It works fantastic for for washing clothes. How do I can my cell phone? You know, last night there was a YouTube outage worldwide for yeah. a little while, and man, it made me nervous. I was like, "Oh my goodness, how are we gonna do without getting a hold of all of our people?" Because we join other people's live streams too, and we have just as much fun as y'all are having now with know. us. You know. It is so fun to get into Sean's live stream. Lone Star Pioneer, like, welcome. Ask really random questions just, just to get him giggling. Mm -hmm. I love it. I learn a lot, though, because I'll throw out a question to throw him off, and he's just like, yep. Oh, uh, yeah, see. <clears throat> and he just rolls with it and answers the question. I'm like, that Couldn't get him. Tori says there was other outages too. Twitter, BitChute, and I don't know what DLive is. Hmm. I thought they were canceling all the conservative channels. Uh, okay, Trip 8, I just got an email. Oh, good, you got it then. Oh, that'll be something that we can... Okay. Yeah, we'll, we'll get back to you, Trip 8. Uh, my yeah. phone is actually my camera at the moment, so I yeah. saw it come in. Last week, uh, in the middle of our live stream, <clears throat> my app crashed. My YouTube app crashed on my phone. Yeah, So we decided to use Amy's like, phone tonight. So my, abused. My phone is just used. Used and abused. Um, Learn hey, how to make soap. That's like one thing that I have not gotten into that I really want to. Is soap making. Yeah, but we have to. I need somebody here, hands-on, because <clears throat> working with lye and stuff kind of scares the crap out of me. You know, me. look, we, we've <laughs> been we've been in the homesteading lifestyle for long enough that we under I think we understand the meaning of community because there's no way that we can do everything that there is to do having to do with homesteading and get good at it and keep up with it. There's just no way. Right. Hard heck. Yeah, Wendy, do the lie outside. Yeah, I, I saw your video about um, about some of that, yeah. <coughs> that's why bartering is important, exactly. Yep. And that's where the mercantiles- I always uh, barter for soap. That yeah. has to be where the mercantile buildings, the, the, the shops started. Right. So that people could- Get fuss. Could- uh, me. <laughs> trade trade their goods like that. I'm, I don't know that for certain, but it's got to be. <clears throat> yeah, wear gloves. Lie burn is bad. And see, that's why I don't want to attempt that on my own, because I just know I'm, you know, I'm gonna screw it all up. <clears throat> oh, hey, rustic traditions. I was just looking at your comment there. Mix that... the powder, the lye powder with ice, so the fumes aren't very bad at all. Interesting. Hmm. Isn't there something called cold press soap that doesn't require a lie? I think there is, but I don't know where to get it. I don't know how to do it. There's so much info about soap. If you don't know exactly what you're looking for. If I can do it, you can do it. <laughs> but if you don't know exactly what you're looking for, then <clears throat> you don't know exactly what videos to look up. 
it's not that nerve wracking, no big deal. But you, and you know, that's, that. I struggle, me personally, I don't know about you, but I struggle with that a lot. If I haven't done something, if I've never done something, then the first time doing it, I get so anxious because I want to do things right. And if I don't know that I can, that bothers me so bad until I I've done something at least once. Okay, John says we have 51 more cases of empty number 10 cans ready to be filled and sealed. Make the drive to Oklahoma and let's get you set up. <laughs> oh, oh, man. I would love to. With him on sick leave, we can't go anywhere. No. Kate's going to learn how to make soap so she can come teach me. <laughs> and Kate is such an amazing teacher. Oh, if man. you guys have not watched any of Kate's videos yeah. on Inside Kate's Kitchen, you're missing out. She is such an amazing teacher. She's so calm and soothing age. and to the point. Oh, Kate. <clears throat> I've learned so much from Kate. So, so much. And I will be in your live stream Sunday. No, we, we Because kinda, I have set an alarm on my phone. We've kind of gotten off topic. Here. I know. Not, well, not off topic. We're still on topic. But we've, we've kind of lost where we're at in our... <laughs> how, how we wanted... To, to, to get this to go. Half as much as we do in normal time. So one one thing that we learned um, in moving out here to this homestead because we came when we came this was a blank slate we mm. we had cut down trees everything down to the grass. Well, okay, we nothing. cut down the trees because the trees that were here <laughs> were trash trees. Right, right. It was it was brush not real trees so we were we started from nothing there was blank slate right um we took out a lot of elderberries because we didn't know that's what they were then but, but they, uh, they came back but one thing that i learned was especially in louisiana summers get stinking hot when you don't have any shade yeah so i always suggest to people when they ask me what's the first thing i should do when i get to my new property plant your fruit trees because it's going to take time for them to, to start producing and plant some shade trees. You know, hey, Katie. At, of course, after you've got your... She moved mountains. Cool. Hey, Katie. Uh, of course, that's after you've got your 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 house, your structure. Your, right. Uh, but I I really feel like uh, those, those trees are important. You don't have to do anything with that. Kate's got that. Right. <laughs> Well, I've been in other live streams and I'm I'm used to like helping know, out. So I know, I know. I promise you, Kate's got it far faster than you can even touch your mouth. Right. Yeah. And Miss Bonnie's here too. Hey, welcome. Hey, welcome, guys. Dwarf, Dwarf fruit trees produce more quickly. Right. I don't know <laughs> that I found very many dwarf trees around here at our nurseries and stuff. I well, haven't seen things are going to really change for us because many. the nursery that we normally go to got really tore up. I know. So, uh, yeah. Lake Charles, I, I know it, 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 it's not known nationally right now, but Lake Charles is still a mess. And don't apologize, Ms. Bonnie. You guys do what you got to do. <coughs> They're also less disease resistant. Mm -hmm. We went into town today. And like, it's still hard to find a place that's open to eat. Yeah. Uh, I drive through Lake Charles daily. Yeah. Oh, well, there you go. Wow. Yeah. yeah, he's he's from De Quincey. He's the one that I connected okay. with recently. Yep. Yeah. Okay. That makes more sense. I was like, wait, hold up a minute. How are all the LCFD stations? I haven't been to work <laughs> in five weeks now, but I was able to visit my station station six um i don't think there's any repair a few done. days ago i mean it's still standing um i don't know that anything's been repaired the roof got quite a bit of damage uh every station was damaged but i don't know how severely uh, mm -hmm. i know seven over by uh the hospital on nelson road their their uh truck doors got blown in the, the garage doors that the trucks go through, they got tore out. Um, and Station 2 out on Broad Street by the prison, that one got messed up too. Do we follow the max? I do. I follow a lot of people. <laughs> but I don't have time to watch all of their videos. I wish I did. Station on 27 near the store is destroyed. 
on 27. That's not Lake Charles then, right? <clears throat> or is that... Help me out. Ward 4? Ward 4, yeah. I don't know where Ward 4 is. I, I'm sorry. Is that in your area, De Quincey? Between Sulphur and De Quincey, okay. okay. See, I don't know highways around. I have five citrus trees. They've all been in the ground for six years. Nothing. La, 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 la. No fruit yet. Uh, we've got a couple. We've, we've got a, 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 the orange. Uh, Satsuma. Satsuma yeah. We've got a Satsuma tree, which is a type of orange. And we've got a lemon tree. Uh, the Satsuma didn't produce anything this year. Last year it did. Pretty decent. And they're, they're both very young trees. And the lemon was doing pretty good. And then Laura I had decided. Seven lemons on my tree. And then. Laura took all but one. Lemon. No. No. Laura took all but two. And Rayleigh ate one of them. Oh. Okay. Between Laura and Rayleigh. <laughs> yeah. Rayleigh's our niece. <laughs> Yeah, ours is an improved Meyer lemon, is what what the tag said. Right. Got it. <clears throat> Hubby's grandfather was in De Quincey. That's cool. Small world. Built a Pretty shed cool. over their double wide before they did that. You cannot go into the trailer during the heat of the day. Wish I could grow citrus. Oh, where yeah, where I, are you? I've uh, seen, Boots I've and seen them do that. Because um, I don't know that citrus really grows any farther north than where we are. I only have a pecan tree, but the squirrels keep stealing all the pecan. We have a squirrel that comes from the, the canal in the back. West and I Tennessee. see it every morning. It runs all the way to the front yard and gets pecans and goes all the way to the back. And I've got pecans, like, strung out all over in the field. He eats our figs, too. Yeah. He just, so. um, Southern Boy's talking about a fig. We have one fig tree, and it's it's also a young tree. And uh, Everything we have is... You know, within the last few years that we've planted it. Now, the apples, I don't know if the apples are going to make it after being shuffled the way they were with yeah. the storms. They're, they're still leaning. Oh, you got hey, it, Chris. Michigan Daffodil. <laughs> that would be scary. Yeah. I, yeah, I love watching the squirrels. But I don't like them taking my food. <laughs> On Monday. <clears throat> Let's see all the citrus that we get. Everything we we buy uh, young trees, and they are grafted. Yep. They're grafted onto a stronger rootstock. We don't get anything from seed. And the squirrel still has tomato and climb the wooden fence, take two bites, and then left the tomato sitting on the fence. Oh, uh, remember the um, year they did that with our strawberries? Yeah. You're going to make me drive this bug out right to Louisiana Arch. <laughs> Rats with fluffy tails just watch one get sick. I, I would love well, to yeah, travel. You're probably um, right, but. Uh, but until he's cleared from the doctor and back to work fully he can't go anywhere on sick leave i wish man i wish i could travel i know because right now he's sitting around doing nothing driving me crazy so traveling would be amazing because uh -oh. you know are we buffering um deer season starts saturday oh really for um you trying to go to arkansas susan and wayne and them it's only six hours who would catch us well <laughs> it's only six hours <clears throat> oh yeah, no, Chris, I'm I'm well past the the itchy stage. This is the the longest that I've been able to ever grow a beard in my adulthood. Oh yeah, and y'all should see him in the morning. He washes that thing, and he conditions that thing, and he brushes it. That's, and he's that's got my buddy. Some beard balm stuff that he puts in it and At which i got from um from, mind and body co yeah which you need to do a review on i cannot do a review on that because i didn't put it on my beard i'm enjoying having a beard <sighs> tori says she's in arkansas right now oh are you oh no that's right i saw that wait did you guys move 
Beard envy. I, I always have beard envy, and not so much right now, finally. <laughs> I'm going to love it and hug it and call it George. <laughs> <laughs> we're in Arkansas. We're in Hot Springs. Oh, oh wow! Sweet. That's See, not so I want, far. I want to go up to Arkansas. <clears throat> not moved yet. Oh, so it's your bug out location. Oh, gotcha. Um, I want to go up to. I remember that um, too. Southeast Arkansas. We have. Um, Susan and Wayne from uh, Grower Your Plant at Home set are up there. And uh, we went last year and we got to go hunting and oh man, it was, that was a lot of fun. so beautiful. It was, it was such great company. November, was it? It was November. It was around Thanksgiving, either right before or right after. Yeah. But oh, uh, it was so beautiful. Oh, I loved it. It was around this time of year because it was um, hunting season, mm -hmm. I know that. Yeah, that was an interesting day. Uh, Amy and Abby... Uh, Rachel Amy said and, uh, you can always come up here. I knew that was yeah, coming. Amy and Susan were uh, video chatting, and Susan shot a deer, and Amy was able to watch while video chatting. I and, watched uh, her shoot the deer, and then I was then watching her, her cleaning it. Struggle. Because yes. she was cleaning it by herself. Wayne was at work. And uh, I was like, oh, God, I she, really want to go she help came her. and met me, and she's like... Uh, Susan's cleaning a deer by herself. I really want to go help her. Mind you, this is a six-hour one-way trip, okay? So I, I kind of laughed it off, and I'm like, no, there ain't no way we're going to get there in time. What are, you what are you talking about? So she kept following me around the yard while Susan is still on the phone, right? She's like, can we, can we please? Can we please? <laughs> never in my life, never in my adult life, since I've had, you know, a family and kids and stuff. I used to be, a long time ago, I was spontaneous, but... I really wanted to go. She talked me into taking a spontaneous six-hour trip and staying for three days, which we, it was great. We, we had, had a great time. We had so much we did. fun. We did. Y'all, there is nothing like that, being that, in, in a deer blind. Just so out of day, character for us. At the crack of dawn. Yeah. Watching the sun come up okay, through, the, through the trees... <clears throat> oh man, it was so beautiful. It was really beautiful. Peaceful, so quiet, and like you couldn't hear a sound. There was there was no noise. The people with the blue the blue names are the people who help us moderate the chat. So if anybody comes into the chat trying to make trouble, they have the power to get those people out of here. Right. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, we, we should probably get back on topic. You should get back on topic. <laughs> now, mechanics. The, I love it. The people with the green names are the ones who joined our channel and became members. Right. And uh, if you're interested in how that works, you go back out where, where the little subscribe button is, and next to that says join, and it'll tell you all the specifics. Right. <clears throat> Our Kate will put them in like three, two, one. Because yeah, right. <laughs> Kate's usually pretty. There, there it is. is. <laughs> I knew it. Uh, I knew it. So, I knew it was coming. <laughs> um, you want? You also um, not getting started in homesteading. So be good, or you're out. <laughs> no. Um, plant your garden based on what you're going to eat, and that that's like preppers say: stock what you eat, eat what you stock. Well, homesteaders say, grow what you eat, eat what you grow. Same same difference. Right. Oh, you have a squad t-shirt. Let's see. You could do it. I can't do it for mine. No, I can. Well, it's because I'm logged in on mine. You have the power, Miss Patty. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's no sweat, Tracy. We're just glad to have you. Um, As my candy camera reaches a hammer, I randomly 
I don't know, folks, just to make them wonder what, what they did. <laughs> Come my on, house John. turned 100 this year. It used to be a homestead. My homestead used to be a potato farm. That's cool. <laughs> Kate, I plant what I eat, but it doesn't grow. So I <laughs> buy what I eat, too. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, yeah. Now you can post links. True. Yeah. We appreciate having you, having your help, Miss Patty. <laughs> um, and Miss Patty is full of knowledge about plants. Now, full gateway livestock. I say gateway because, like, it will lead to bigger and better things. Um, Home say used to be a cotton farm. Interesting. It really depletes um, land. Wow. I don't like kale. I don't, I don't know that I've really given it a, there you go. enough Gateway of a Gateway livestock, rabbits and chickens. Who said that? Kate. Did I? I didn't even say that yet, did nope. I? Yeah, that's exactly what we have is rabbits and chickens. That's what we have written down. <laughs> <clears throat> so chickens are pretty, pretty easy, I'd say, as far as a livestock to get started with. Because they don't take a whole lot of attention. They don't take a whole lot of... Um, enclosure. What, uh, what am I trying to say here? Um, you don't have to put a whole structure. lot of effort into building something. For yeah, them. housing. Housing. There you go. Housing. It's, it's really and chickens are a great source of obviously eggs and meat, depending on the breed of chicken that you can get. And then there's some of the ch some of the breeds like. Um, um, the Rhode Island Reds are uh, my psychic power are, rock. A, they're a dual a dual purpose breed, so they'll give you eggs and they they're uh, of course depending on what you feed them, um, they'll give you meat too, or, or a substantial amount of meat because some of those egg layer breeds they're <laughs> just so thin you and frail. Yeah, you can eat them. You yeah, can you eat them. them. There's, but there's that's some scrawny looking chickens. <laughs> Southern Life Homestead, welcome. I think we butchered the first chicken. I was like, what is wrong with this Chickens chicken? Chickens are good for dancing, too. Is that what you're talking about? <laughs> Never enough time. Welcome. Oh, I didn't even think about the fur. See, that's something I need to I need to find somebody oh, in this yeah. area Anna, that Anna. will yeah. um Oh, rabbits are quiet, hides. too. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, chickens, what else do we have over there? Housing is pretty simple and affordable. Uh, very low maintenance. Now, now the chickens can stink if it's not cleaned regularly. They can they can be a pretty good, pretty nuisance as far as uh, <clears throat> smell goes. Cause, so you don't you really don't want to put your coop too close to anybody else's house or even your backyard or your back door. Um, and chickens will eat anything, which is good and bad. You can throw your kitchen scraps kitchen scraps to your chickens to supplement their feed uh, and give them some good nutrients. But also, if you have free range, you cannot have free range chickens and gardens at the same time. I mean, you just can't. <laughs> so you gotta fence in one or the other. Yeah. Well, I mean, you can to some some extent, but you, you're gonna have to grow extra because the, you they're You're getting going ahead to of us. <laughs> Y'all are saying all the things that I'm about to say. <laughs> Taking all my thunder. Apparently, we want to talk about rabbits. Can't have free-range <laughs> rabbits in a garden, too. Yeah, I don't... As a matter of fact, we had free-range rabbits this morning this by morning, accident. This morning, yeah, they got out. A couple of rabbits got out. So, um, well, let's let's go ahead and move on to rabbits, because everybody wants to say the things that I'm about to say anyway. Chickens do great <laughs> with fodder as well, makes food bill almost non-existent. Yeah. So, what is fodder? That is, Luke, like... I am your fodder. <laughs> I give up. <laughs> that was, that no, was really seriously, good. talk to us. Tell us what fodder is, because I know you've it, done it. It well, I've done it with lentils, mm -hmm. like seeds, because we just we don't eat lentils, and I had a buttload of them. But what is it? It's the sprouts. It's basically sprouts. You sprout the beans, yeah, and then you feed those to the chickens. <clears throat> fodder is the mate of mother. <laughs> <laughs> Patty said fodder is food. 
And so, all right, so rabbits. Rabbits are rapid. You've got rapid meat production. Yeah. They breed like rabbits. That's where the saying came from. A rabbit can go from the, the day of breeding Four weeks uh, gestation. So in four weeks, you're going to have babies. 29 to 30 days, yeah. Okay. And then... Usually 29. At about eight weeks is when we butcher. Six, eight, eight weeks old. So Depending on the breed. <clears throat> so from the day of Depending conception... Depending on the breed, because the, the New Zealands, you can go six to eight on, on butcher date. Mm -hmm. And with the mini rexes that we have, you go more like... 10 to 12 because they're they're smaller but i've noticed that the mini rex we have a mixed breed it's a, it's a mini rex lion head mix that we got from it, it's a mutt is what it is rabbit tastes like chicken but it's very very lean but um they're smaller but they seem to be better moms they seem to hold on to the babies mm -hmm. they they keep the babies alive that they, they're they're much more um motherly i guess um so what i was saying was you can go from the day of conception to the day of slaughter 12 weeks three yeah months. and they give birth and <laughs> wait and i think you wait a for month us, typically typically our the litters that we have is anywhere between four and eight um in we, a litter Most, we have usually between six and eight the ones with the mini rex um any kind of mini rex mix it is really good for um, holding babies. They they take care of the babies for whatever reason. Yes. Thank I you, have John. not gotten that. Yes, we did. Yeah, we did. Yay. I have been waiting for that. We appreciate you. All of you. Uh, I'm excited. Which breed are better moms? The Mini Rex. We have Mini I Rex. Said that. Mini Rex Lion Head. just said that. It's just, it's basically mud rabbits. Just said that. You just said all of that? Yep. You guys should listen to this one. <laughs> <laughs> Quit making me repeat myself. I used to stretch rabbit furs on stiff wire. I made 25 cents a fur. Oh, cool. See, I need somebody around this area that can take the rabbit furs from us. Show me well, show me one time, hands on, and then I'll get it. That's all I need. Is this something you can do? Yeah. Okay. I'm going to hold you to it. Because I want some rabbit furs now. I, I can do it. I was going to find somebody around here that would like split them with us or whatever you know um because i can save them up well, we can still share as, as we as we butcher and stuff if they'll tan them and everything and give me just like half back i would be happy <clears throat> so what else do we have here low maintenance but requires some note taking on breeding schedule yeah the rabbits take a little bit of maintenance as far as breeding you need to keep track of what male rabbit that you bred with the female and that way in case you have problems or um you come out with some like really special bunnies don't breed those again <laughs> i say that because we've had some we got one from the the um, yeah, urine chains of hide yes that's that's no joke we got one from the sale barn i think that rabbit was psychotic she ate her kids. She deferred herself. That was the first she bald rabbit. She looked like rabbit. a dang poodle when yes. she was done pulling her own fur out. Yes, it was. It was really, really bad. And how to gender out the babies so they don't <laughs> breed. Hush, Rachel. That's why I have five. That's babies. why we have some extra babies right now because we. And two of them escaped yeah. this morning. Because I made a mistake and a female got in with the males when they were the young. Uh, yeah, so um batch. But we didn't have no special babies. I was impressed. They're all pretty smart. Rabbits make a lot of great fertilizer. I was getting to that. <laughs> <laughs> you beat me to it. <laughs> and then that's true. Rabbits make a fertilizer. It's considered a cold fertilizer. It can go straight in the garden. Yeah. Yeah, it can it can be used straight in the garden, whereas the, the chicken <clears throat> manure has to be composted, if I'm not mistaken, it's a, like a year. Rabbits are pretty, we, we built all of our own hutches, cage, not hutches, but cages. Mm -hmm. um, in fact, I need to do a video on that. I have never, I have not yet done 
a, a video on rabbits. So sister and brother ba rabbits will breed. Yes, they, they will. But they it's will, not a but good it's, idea. yeah, it's not recommended because eventually doing that, you're going to get some of those special babies, and yeah, I say special because <laughs> they're you, still good eating. You but, start getting birth defects yeah, when you it, do inbreeding like that. It, it, I call them special because uh, some of them look kind of special. <clears throat> We've, we've had a few of those. When you're now, breeding, the one you we wait, got... I usually do three or four. And and what Arthur means by that is you see them... And we need I to do need, a video I need on to that. do a video. It's, and it, it's not... It shouldn't be awkward, but it feels awkward. <laughs> when, the, when the male rabbit finally mounts the female rabbit, it's, it's obvious that he did it. He did his thing. And we do that for three times. I'm sorry. We let him do that three times, three or four times, and uh, See, before we before we move him back, copulate. There you go. Before we move the the female back into her own cage, and we always move the female into the male's cage. Why? Because, and this is what I've been told, and it makes perfect sense. If you put the male into the female's cage then she spends the entire time of her pregnancy trying to get his scent out of her cage. And, and that's, it's no, no, they don't like that. Well, not only that, but <clears throat> um, they won't breed because it's something weird in her cage. She's, she's going to fight the smell, his smell and stuff the whole time and they won't breed. Right. She'll fight him and females are moody. Just move them. Yeah. So we, we always, <laughs> Hi, Kathy. <laughs> Welcome to the Color Pro Conversation. <laughs> it's about rabbits. Yeah, they do. They do kind of. They they fall over. They fall over like. Some do and some don't. It's called it's called a fall off, and the female will whoop, whoop a male if you put it. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. The doe will fight him. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's why. Our female ate her babies. We've had some like that. Yes. Get rid of the female. Try it twice. If if they do that twice with two, two strikes, two litters, they're out. Yeah. I don't keep them. Um, we end up making um, stew out of those. The older rabbits, it, it's kind of like a chicken. Um, with the meat and stuff, always let your meat rest for twenty four hours after butchering. Otherwise, you get rigor set in, and it's like leather. You can't eat it. If the if the um, rigor, you know, rigor is the stiffness of the muscles after death. <laughs> if that is active at the moment, me. and you put that and you put the animal in the freezer, then it locks that rigor in. We accidentally did that with a rooster once, and meat was like bone. Mm -hmm. The older rabbits are kind of like older chickens. You need to cook those for longer. Cook the meat for longer, um, in, in order to tenderize it. When you when you're butchering young baby rabbits, man, they are they are pretty tender. Yeah, rigor mortis, um, which literally translates to the stiffness of death. Awesome. Is that everything that we had? Um, there was something I wanted to mention. Oh, because we live in the in the south in the deep south. Oh, Hidden Gems Farm. Hello. Um, we live in such a hot, humid climate in the summertime. The, the rabbits don't do as well. Uh, where we've got ours is, is uh, under a cover with plenty of airflow. And uh, the, the sun doesn't get to them. Right. <clears throat> because rabbits are, are a cold-natured animal. They love We're the in cold. southwest Louisiana. <clears throat> rabbits do much better with cold than they do with heat that's just the nature of a rabbit yeah we're in southwest louisiana near lake charles if it's really hot we have put um fans out there to keep air flowing because a lot of times um it's, <coughs> it's just so hot and humid there's no airflow it's miserable I'm feeling much better this week, Kathy, than I was last week. That's for Let's sure. be a rabbit. <laughs> uh, I'm still sore. I've got three extra belly, extra belly buttons. <laughs> the, the procedure that they did on me was uh, 
uh, laparoscopic, and it was a, a hernia repair. If you're new and you didn't, if you don't know, I was I had that done last Monday, and uh, I'm sore. No problem, Sean. Do what you gotta do, man. Hmm. <coughs> yeah, we uh we've taken a lot of precautions um around our uh, our, around our homestead. Are what, three three to four feet off the ground. They're th the bottoms are three foot off the ground. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. But there's also they're within a fence too. Right. So we have them under an awning, and we take extra precautions the, against predators. The bottom of the awning is all fenced off. Um, it's pretty well lit around there with, with solar lights and stuff at night. A gastric sleeve and a hood. Oh, well, I hope, I hope she has a quick recovery. And I hope it does her well. <laughs> you read that? Which one? John, like a cheek bird, yeah, right. Oh, I'm gonna go take her out real quick. I know, like after immediately after surgery, I was really like groggy, so oh, bad. I, really Don't I, I hated that, and uh, of course, you know, after a surgery, no matter how minor, they then try to make you go to the bathroom before you leave. Well, I felt like I needed to go. So I go, I go to the bathroom and I'm standing there and I'm like, oh my God, please do something. Cause it really felt like I needed to go so bad. And I got a few drips and she's like, oh, that's good enough. You can go. <laughs> so, and, and that's when I realized it's because of the, all the air pressure that it was just pressing on everything and making things feel weird. But, um, Amy had some fun with me after the surgery and all my grogginess and uh, no, she did not record anything, but uh, she she loves to tell me about it. But yeah, I was for days. I was I it just it felt swollen and just it, it's hard to explain. It's hard to explain. Just it was very uncomfortable. Should have been a video. <laughs> no, no recordings. And that's that's what I keep telling people. You know, for for eleven years, I've been a fireman where. You know, if if I have to wake up, I'm just like, you know, I snap awake and I'm, I go do what I got to do. And just not being able to, just, you know, from the medicine and all, I, I did not like that feeling at all. It was so uncomfortable. We do have shirts for sale. They're on our Etsy store. <coughs> pressure pushing. Yes, pressure pushing on the bladder. That's what I realized it was. I was inflated. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Kate. Yeah, Lori, Kate just put up our Etsy store link. Uh, we have other things for sale, too, on our Etsy store. We have our elderberry syrup kits, and uh, we have uh, the Broussard homes, the Broussard mugs. Uh, it's a coffee mug like this, but it's, it has our logo on instead of this Bayou Bash logo. And uh, what else do we have? The Bayou Bash uh, ball caps. We have those on there too. The air pressure went into my shoulder. And yeah, that that's that's got to stink because the uh, the nurse told me that I might I might get the, the painful shoulder, uh, and I didn't. I didn't get the pains, but I could obviously feel like, I could feel, I felt inflated. <clears throat> Do you have on Dewey? No, uh, no, we, we, we keep all that to ourselves. <laughs> My doctor told me to lie down as much as possible so that wouldn't happen. Oh, okay. I know I was pretty uncomfortable for a good while. Um, I'm to the point now 
the site, uh, it was an umbilical hernia, so it's right around my navel. Uh, the site that they actually repaired doesn't hurt at all anymore. It's just, it's the spots where they went in with the tools for the laparoscopic surgery. Those sting, they hurt. Um, Abby has, she started on a painting. I don't know how far she got into it, but she has been doing some painting. She hasn't finished it, I don't think, right? Nope. Your body absorbs and passes the air. Yeah. So what happens to the air after? Doesn't it, that allow bacteria to multiply? I don't know about that. I know it, it, it absorbs and it passes, like John said, but... Um, <clears throat> I thought it was odd, you know, I haven't had it. The last surgery I had was 26 years ago, 20, 24 years ago. And, uh, <clears throat> <laughs> um, I don't, I don't remember if they gave me antibiotics afterwards to take after that surgery, but they didn't this time for sure. And I thought, I thought that was odd and maybe it's not. Excuse me. Oh, I'm sorry. Good night, Susan. It's a nitrogen, not just regular air. Yeah, I know. I know. Uh, an operating room is a, is a sterile environment. So, uh, seems like they should vacuum the air back up. Uh, yeah, I haven't. Uh, my friend with the who who was who's doing the coffee. I haven't heard again from him. Um, hopefully, we can start putting together like some maybe some holiday packs with uh, some of get on it. some of his coffee into our mugs. And we're already in November. I know. Homestead Paradise, welcome. fast after surgery. <laughs> Got some nitrous. Should make it here. <laughs> oh man. Who is garden planning? Oh, you were able to get some some stuff in the garden yeah, this week. We did. We um I planted some <coughs> turnips and sweet peas so far. Um, I need to rework some of the herbs and um, we are planning to add in some more raised beds. I have harvested some of our sweet potatoes, not all of them. The sweet potatoes do, didn't do as well as I wanted them to. We've got a hard, hard soil. Yeah. So they didn't, they didn't plump out like they should have. And, and we planted late too. Yeah. But this is our first time and we're going to learn better. Yep. Good night, Chris. I'm growing greens and getting some of my tunnels ready. That's uh, cool. I, I really want to do some type of greenhouse. <clears throat> well, we've got your little one. We can set that one, that one back up. Yeah. I need some kind of heat source in there, though. For the wintertime. A lamp or something. Yeah would probably be all it needs low tunnels yeah because we typically don't get too cold here right just got a seed swamp this week For, forgot those in the south are still planting yeah yeah well um, we we can plant year round yeah it, depending on what you know what what we plant depends on what time of year so we, over the winter, we can do the turnips and, you know, the in-ground stuff. Yeah. And uh, the sweet peas did really well last year. Mm -hmm. um, they can tolerate a frost and, and things like that, which is usually all we get until January, February. Usually ground, January, February is our coldest months, and that's when we have a little bit of struggle with some things, but not really. 
We rarely get more than a dusting of snow, if that, in a year. Never do we get frozen frozen ground. Mm -mm. I don't I don't even know what that is, honestly. I've never experienced that. But it is 2020. <laughs> uh, we are prepping to add um, propane to the house. Any big plans for the homestead this winter? Yeah, we're adding propane. Yeah. We're adding we're adding propane. Um, we're gonna use uh, propane for the stove. We're gonna be changing out the stove to a gas stove, which I'm excited about. Yeah, we we did. and and we're adding in a um, Ow. an inlet in the floor for a propane heater because we are all electric. And one thing we learned after the storms is the electricity is not always there so having a power outage due to ice on the lines or things like that we've had before it's been years but we've had it before so we are preparing for the blizzard is what i call it which a blizzard for us is lots of ice you never know but we had to get our roof replaced and we went with the um snow snow and ice shield instead of tar paper so we're, yeah we're ready for it <laughs> but um <clears throat> we're gonna put in uh and install a heater in the kitchen to have as a backup and um it'll also help because um we won't have to run the central uh heat hardly at all because i mean we don't keep it super hot in here in the winter time we're very well insulated too we got the yeah. better we upgraded to the better insulate insulation package but we went and talked to the the propane people today and got a lot of knowledge on what we're going to need to get done and i've got a plumber coming hopefully next week if they show up and um to give us a price on putting the stubs in into the floor and things like that and i think it's pretty much a go because i i'm i'm ready for it 1996 ice storm storm. yes Mm -hmm. and that that's that's what I'm talking about. It was it was in the 90s, late 90s, <coughs> when uh, the last storm, ice storm that we had. But um, I want to say we That's were out of power 96. for two weeks. Yeah. Uh, there was the, just an ice storm in Oklahoma, right, John? I don't know if that affected uh, Hart, you. Uh, windy. Windy. Uh, oh, that's right. Windy I know Hardback. Windy was affected by that. I think that would work with my little greenhouse. Okay, what? Oh, I missed something. Oh, somebody said buddy, buddy heater. Uh, who was that? Mary Beth? Yeah. We looked at the buddy heaters. Oh, the tea lights and terracotta pots. <coughs> um, I saw Sean was using those um, in one of his live streams, and I completely forgot about those. What about ideas for staying cool in the heat without AC? There's nothing, nothing that you can do without. That's the cat. <laughs> Super um, cat right now. Uh, there's nothing. Cold you can showers do. Yeah, was well, our friend. Yeah, cold um, showers. During the heat because we had no hot water. Um, we just, we do the. Um, swamp cooler if you have power. We have, we got a window unit, a window air conditioner unit. And now we have a generator. And, and one of our viewers bought us a generator. Thank you. Um, so, so we have that now. We have that as a backup plan. <clears throat> we have tried, um, ice, like jugs of ice in front of a fan. And I've literally watched the temperature yeah. drop John at, one to two degrees. John at heirloom permaculture is amazing when it comes to spreadsheets. We mess with him about it, but he's really good at it. Uh, so you can email him, um, his address, his email address is on his channel about page, and he's he says he'll he's more than willing to provide that to anybody who emails. So, thank you for that, John. That's awesome. He's he has some amazing <clears throat> information, and it's like all formatted for you. It, it it's great. <laughs> it's absolutely. The big wonderful. buddy heats a large. Oh, there's a big buddy. Huh. See, we were we saw the 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 buddy heaters that uh, the little green propane bottle hooks into. Right, and it only lasts for about three <coughs> or four hours. 
that wouldn't do enough. Um, we're talking about heating overnight. Yeah, we want to be able to sleep all night. You know? uh, yeah, we did that one night with um, the Coleman stove. And I stayed up all night while the kids slept because I was afraid that, you know, the cat was going to knock it over or, you know, we were going to catch something on fire or, you know, just anything out of the ordinary. So I stayed up all night so they could sleep and stay warm. And I, I mean, it, it warmed up the living room and kitchen area quite a bit, but we need something a little more long-term than that. Call it a night. I know. You have an appointment in the morning. I do. I have my follow-up appointment with my surgeon in the morning, so we get to go and let him see everything, make sure okay, everything's all good. Okay, the big buddy uses the propane tank like a grill and has a tip-over shutoff, but oh, you're not supposed to use the big propane tanks inside. No. The big propane tank has to be outside, so you have to be able to run the, the line through, through the, the floor, floor or the wall or window or whatever. Right. <coughs> That's awesome, Kate. Um, so, yeah, we opted to do, okay, since Bonnie. we're going to run, run lines anyway for the stove, we're going to... Um... Night Hidden Gems, thanks for hanging out with us. Oh... Um, Can you... since we're going to run the lines through the floor anyway, we're going to go ahead and get a, um, propane heater to put in the, in the right. kitchen area. G candle space heater. Yes. Check out that video for sure. I need a, I need a refresher on that. Cause I still haven't, I've, I've seen it. I know how it works roughly. But I haven't, uh, I've never tried it, so I'm going to check out your video, Sean. Wait, what is that? The tea the tea, lights? The tea candle space heater? Yeah. I want to look into that, too, because that would be a, a good secondary source. I, I appreciate everybody for hanging out with us. Hot and... char, charcoal in a terracotta pot for my greenhouse one night. <laughs> that That's, makes sense. Yeah. Um. Thank you all for being patient with us while we're not really putting out videos other than our live streams. You got it, Tori. Things have just been crazy lately. And when we do have time to do videos, we don't really have the motivation. Just because we're so exhausted with just handling life. So it's really, I'm so glad to see everybody here tonight hanging out with us. I really appreciate that. <clears throat> Al alcohol space here out of a Coke can. That's a prayer request here. Yeah. Rustic traditions. Mom has ALS. I want to make a rocket stew. I think, does Sean, don't you have a video for that too? <laughs> Sean has a video for everything. Right? Um, yeah, I, oh, I Mama actually, Z. there's a guy hey. here that will make rocket stoves. <laughs> and so I'm working on something for that, Rach. Um, if I can get the supplies, um, the supplies cost about a hundred dollars, but it makes, I think he said three, three of the stoves for the hundred dollars. So yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Brett, for what? Yeah, a rocket stove. He was on the phone. Oh, right. <coughs> Yeah, so, you know, lots of amazing channels here in the chat tonight. Please be sure and check each other out. I'm sure if you, I'm sure whatever the topic, uh, somebody in here has a video on that. Mama Z does amazing cooking videos. Kate's um, got canning and instructional videos. Cheap. Does Garden, gardening yeah. videos, obviously. Kate does instructional videos for the, the kitchen as well. Um. Uh, let three, us know. I mean, three it, bricks and some screening. No more than six. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Um, yeah. Did you get Mama Z's? No. Uh, her, her son has COVID. Oh no. Wait. No. 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 Oldest son's other mom has COVID. Little hometown in North Texas has it going through it bad. Oh man. Sorry to hear that. <clears throat> wow. <coughs> Dang. 
We pray for our country. Yep. There's there's a there's a there's a deep deep divide in our country right now, and we have great friends on both teams. So, yeah, that's why we try to keep the politics out of our live streams. <clears throat> and we appreciate everybody being on board with that. Thank you, thank you for that. Got it, Sean. Um, Rachel, I'll let you know about the cost of the rocket stove um, thing. <laughs> I need to look, I need to check back with him because the price of materials and stuff is going up around here, but we may be able to find some scraps. I'm wondering. <coughs> scraps of what? I'm sorry. For was... the rocket stove. The metal. Solid metal or the, the... The square metal tubing. Oh. That's what he was using, so. Yeah. It's got to be a six inch, huh? I think so. Lori is still laid off. We're going to pray for you to get a job, Lori, so that you can gain some employment. Still need to send an update to you guys. Okay. We all need a timeout from it for yeah. sure. Oh, Rachel says, let me know what kind of material you need. I think it's a six inch <clears throat> square metal pipe. The people are not divided, the politicians are. Yeah, but you know what? <clears throat> There's a lot of people, I have been silent on Facebook on purpose because there is a whole lot of people being very ugly on both sides on Facebook and I'm, I'm not I'm not proud of those people. You got it, Miss Patty. If I could spell your name right. <coughs> People here are very divided. Living, living it here in my city, and it's just, it's ugly. Yeah. Yeah. Make a rocket stove in the ground. Oh, okay. Yeah. What is it? The... Okay, yeah, but you dig a hole around here. Well, yeah, we don't have, <laughs> everything's very flat here, so we don't have, like, the side of a hill to dig in. Yeah. Crystal Brooks, yeah, welcome. Yeah, but even, even if you could, I mean, you can dig a hole and make, make your mound and what, whatever and whatnot. Digging here it stinks <laughs> because it's all clay. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Crystal, we're just we're we're uh, come we're wrapping up tonight, so uh, we're we're offering uh, we're asking for prayer requests. <clears throat> you can use mud and sod to make a stove. Yeah, yeah. Um, I I mean, in in the event that we absolutely had to, by all means, yes. But in the middle of the summer, I'm not sitting out there digging a hole for an hour. Right. I will find. I will go take somebody else's uh, garden blocks, or I will borrow some off the side of my garden, and make myself a rocket stove, <laughs> and then put them back when I'm done. I'm just gonna say, look, as far as the politics go, the world looks a whole lot different when you stay away from the media. Yeah. I'm just gonna say that. I'm telling you, I would. In, in the event of emergency, I would definitely go take some blocks off the side of my garden and, like, <laughs> pack it in real good and just um, <clears throat> do what I got to do. But right, we, we made it through the, the two storms that hit us and the hey, aftermath Terry. and and all that stuff. And, I mean, really and truly, I, we, were, we were really blessed for the skills and the knowledge that we have the preps and stuff that we have. We're learning where our preps are short, what we need to prep a little more on, and... Oh, prep a little more on? <laughs> <laughs> you talking about me? <laughs> Kinda. Oh, okay, man. but um, yeah. And like I said, the ready-made meals are one of those things that we can prep more of. So, um, to have them available for after, you know, the aftermath like that when we're out of power and everybody's exhausted and... 
Oh, God. Well, and that just, that adds a layer. That adds a layer to the preps. And right. That, that's the way I think of it is, right. you know, don't put all your eggs in one basket. That's, and I didn't know that until like last year or so. That's, that, that's biblical. Don't put all your eggs in one basket. That's like came from the Bible. Anywho, um, we like to diversify our preps. He wasn't talking about you, Rachel. He was talking about himself. <laughs> 25 years wedding endurance <laughs> well congratulations and happy anniversary oh yeah I said it at the beginning of the live stream and a lot of you weren't here yet thank you so much for all the birthday wishes that everybody sent to me on Tuesday it really made my day special <laughs> and of uh, in addition to all that, Abby made me a homemade, from scratch, uh, cheesecake with uh, topped with peanut butter and fudge, or peanut butter and chocolate syrup. And it was so good. I ate two pieces, but we're not counting. And you um, ate three, because you ate, you I, ate a piece last night with no, Danny. And no, no, actually I did Oh, you didn't? No. I, I'm a sucker for cheesecake. You're a sucker for a lot of things, but you know. Sorry, Megan didn't have Logan <laughs> on your birthday, Brad. Maybe, maybe next maybe kid. Maybe next kid. <laughs> Poor thing. We're already planning the next kid, and uh. You old fart. <laughs> love it. Yeah. Oh man, I love Let's it. See who can guess how old I am. With that beard, you're gonna get some pretty high numbers. There's still 40, 40 people here. What the hell? <laughs> <laughs> Terry got it. First, the first guess was right. Uh, oh. 40, 45. Yeah, Press 50. like my little brother, 46. <laughs> Not a day over 87. Oh my goodness. Y'all are silly. Now, I'm, I just turned 45. I was born in 1975. Oh, wow. <laughs> you were guessing. 15 going on 45. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 21 with. If you'd have seen him experience. last week right after his surgery, it was like 45 <laughs> going on 82. <laughs> Poor Misty. She says, dang, I'm older than you. <clears throat> Only physically, I'm sure. Give me some more schooling. Oh, I found a, uh, Abby found a, well, Abby's been doing homeschooling, you know, she's, she's in the Lavka school words, Brit words. Um, <laughs> I'm old enough to be your mama. One of, <laughs> one of, uh, one of the things that Abby uses is Khan Academy. Mm -hmm. And I found out that that's, it's free courses. You don't really achieve anything for it. Like, but it's courses that anybody can go just create a login and take. Mm -hmm. It's cool. And there's a bunch of stuff that I'm interested in. Honey, I've been doing about <clears throat> Khan Academy for a while, and I've told you about this. You keep but, things you know, from me. No. <laughs> I've told you about this, but it goes... Oh, look, everybody knows about Khan Academy. See? So, Men are um, big babies anymore. <laughs> yep. 53 until January. It's called Khan Academy. <laughs> K-H-A-N. Khan Academy. <laughs> Brett's so old. He's there you go. Jesus. Thank you, Terry. That's it. But Abby was showing me that, and uh, I'm interested in learning some stuff. Yeah. It, uh, what? I don't know. Abby said that uh, she's got she's got an opportunity to take one called uh, personal finance. I think. Yeah. There's a personal finance <clears throat> course. There's biology. There's a there's world chemistry. history, which. I'm I'm intrigued by history. I hated history in high school, and I love it now. Um, there's one for kids too. It's ConAcademy.org. Yeah, I thought so. It, oh, it's .org. Mm -hmm. I got it. I got it. I got it. I'll just let you do it. She said, "Do they have botany?" I don't know. I think it's it's more like. I don't know. Um, like geared toward high school 
type stuff. That's the link for Khan Academy. Okay, Amy put up the link there in the chat. A nonprofit center for learning. Oh. Well, <clears throat> I heard that. Yeah. I'm not sure what to make of <laughs> make of that. Um, Khan, Khan Academy is free for anybody. Um, We're doing life another. courses. They have. <clears throat> We're there's all kind of math. There's all there. There's tons and tons and tons <coughs> of stuff on there, um, and I don't think you have to do a login. I think you can enter it as a guest, but it won't keep track of your your progress. Oh, Duolingo. Is Duolingo that... is one of the things that Abby used for French. Yeah, uh, yeah. I thought so. Um, they use that at the school too. The school uses Khan Academy because it's free, yep. and it, it basically gives like an extra practice. Sorry, course. boots and bounty. This is just the southern goodbyes. That's how it face. goes. <laughs> yep. We need to get going though. We really do. There's courses for youngins called adulting. On Khan Academy. Serious. <laughs> wow. That's crazy. My daughter uses Duolingo. Yeah. Um, Abby liked Duolingo. Uh, Katie used it for Spanish. Abby's using Matt, it for Spanish. Maybe if y'all leave, we'll just, we'll be able to talk. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is <Okay>. good stuff. <laughs> you mad? You mad? It's okay. You're so cute when you're mad. <laughs> I'm about to punch you <laughs> in your All right, third yeah. belly button. <laughs> this has been so much oh, fun. Oh, wow. I really enjoy hanging out with you guys. This is great. This is an all-the-time thing. So he messes with me, and I mess with him. And I'm back we're to never goofy, leaving so... your stuff with us forever. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Okay, y'all. Uh, I'm looking forward to next week. Um, I need to get with Sean about some different topic ideas. Cause, mm -hmm. yeah. Do that. Okay. <laughs> Don't turn it off. <laughs> Good night, y'all. Thanks night, so much for hanging out with us. It's really been a blast. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Bitches in love. Good night, guys. We'll see you guys next week. Good night. Be blessed. You gonna turn it off? <laughs>